Aloha. Aloha. One more time. Aloha. Aloha. Nice. You know, whenever we say that word, Aloha, something happens. It starts right here, just as a thought. And then that thought travels all the way down here. Hawaiians call this place your Na'alu. It's a place where all of your emotions sit. And it's right here, right in your Na'alu, that that thought grabs onto something, something good, something that is the best of who you are, just a tiny piece of it. And then that tiny piece of goodness quickly makes its way up and out into the world. Aloha. And if you're lucky, it will cause the same reaction in those around you. And before you know it, something amazing has happened. Something that has the power to change the world. My name is Duke, and I'd like to share my story with you. It's a story of Aloha. The year is 1894. to live through. 
So those are things that I try to layer into the play. So I do encourage you to come see it if you can. What I want to do right now is talk a little bit more about the production. Um, back up to about a year ago, Eric Johnson, who is the artistic director of HTY, the Honolulu Theater for Youth, which is where the show is being produced, uh, came to me and said, let's do a show about Duke, because he had just found out about this exhibit. He knew that we were going to do an exhibit honoring Duke's 125th anniversary, and we had already done two collaborations between the Bishop Museum and the Honolulu Theater for Youth. So this would have been, this is the third year, and he says, well, why not have it be about Duke? And of course, I was ecstatic about that idea. I, I was beaming, and then I started to do the research, the research for about five months, and I sat down and said, yeah, it's time to write a play. But how do you write a play about Duke? The big problem that I came across was Duke, if you know anything about him, he is one of the most humble individuals you will ever read about or research in your life. So that, for me, was actually a problem, because if I'm gonna portray Duke, Duke would never say, oh, I did this, I did that, I did this. He was so humble that he said very few things about what he did. And you have to, you know, learn about his accomplishments from other, other places or other people. So that's when I was able to come up with different ideas in terms of how to put different characters into the story to help tell the, uh, the legacy of Duke. So he's not the one saying, I did this and that. So that's just a little bit about how I developed that. Um, back to my notes here. Uh, when I was trying to find out what the story needed to be about, it was hard um, to find that one thing because Duke did so much. He was, you know, in a, uh, an accomplished server. He brought serving to the rest of the world. He won medal after medal in the Olympics. He had so many accomplishments, but I couldn't focus on one thing that seemed right. But then what happened was, it was, um, during the time when there was a lot on the news about what was happening in our nation, a lot of heavy things happened in, in the nation. One thing in particular that, that came, comes to my mind right now was all that the um, PDPL, the problems with the, the churches, the African American churches throughout the nation, and, and all the all the the, the, you know, the bad stuff that was happening in, in the world. And I had to just turn the TV off because I couldn't take it. It was too, too heavy to just to watch the news. And so then, I decided to start writing, and I think this story needs to be about what Duke was about, and his creed was aloha, it was love. And so that was, that's when I began to write the script, and I knew exactly what it was. He was put on this earth, I believe, not by coincidence, but for a reason, to spread his, uh, his creed, his um, uh, belief in aloha, and I, I, I hope that's what this, this play does. So that's just a little bit about the development of the play. Um, the production side of it, you can take a look at some of these pictures. These are the, you'll see the set in the back, and it's really just a series of flats that look like, that are cut out to be the shapes of surfboards. So you have that iconic look of Duke and all of his um, surfboards and his friends and the, the, the Beach Boys with their surfboards. But it's also a, a surface to project things on. So those surfboards become different things, becomes the water, becomes the newspaper. And that was designed by Chesley Cannon, who's uh, the, uh, both the set designer and the projection designer. This costume that I'm wearing, this very skimpy little uh, piece that I'm wearing right now, of course, is modeled after an actual swimsuit that would have been worn in the early 1900s, and it was um, uh, created by uh, Lacey Rolfe, who did all of the costuming. And the costuming is very interesting. Like I said, I'm playing 12 different characters, and sometimes I have a few seconds to put on a full-on costume, and others I got like a second. So if you had to get really creative, how are you going to change from character to character? If it's not a full-on costume change, you see that I did a character change with just a hat. She also made use of things like magnets. So I go from swimming Duke, and I go backstage, and then all of a sudden I'm Olympic Duke, right? So you're not just, that's okay. And so, on the back of this are pieces of metal, and in sewn into the costume are little pieces of magnets. So she had to get really creative because of all these different costumes. Okay. Um, the sound 
was very, very exciting for me because I was finally able to collaborate with a friend of mine. His name is John Senor, Senor and he does the music at uh, Leewood Community College. But John and I worked together years ago on a play called Ulalema on Maui. It's a play that still runs there, and I was in that show for a couple of years. John was one of the original musicians in that show. It's an amazing show, and the sound is, the music is half of the show. So he was able to collaborate with us, and he brought a couple of his students from Leeward Community College that were very talented, and we have some really good original slack key music that kind of lays a good foundation for the show. I'm really excited. Um, the two young musicians are Sam Willis and Honeyball Sosa that did the, um, the uh, Slap keyboard, so it's a really, really nice piece that has a lot of original music in there. Um, that's kind of it for the production. What I want to do now is talk a little about, a little bit about the Mele Inoa for Duke. So a Mele Inoa, some of you may or may not be familiar with what that is. It, it's a name chant, and a colleague and dear friend of mine, Ryan Kaki Little Suyoka, was digging through some old Hawaiian language newspapers. I don't know if some of you know, but they were actually newspapers in the 1800s and early 1900s that were written in Hawaiian and he did his research and he found this one issue of Kanupe in um, October of 1912 that had two mele inoa written for Duke, two name chants to honor him. One of them was really, really long and the other one was short enough for us to put an air, I'll put a voice to it. And we also put movement to this mele inoa. And I'm gonna do that movement for you. We put a hula to it. Now the hula is not in the show, so you guys are getting um, an extra thing that you don't actually get to see in the show. And I'm gonna do that in just a moment, but I want to talk a little bit about that, that particular mele inoa. And what mele inoa is, <coughs> mele inoa were very often composed for our alihi, our chiefs, and the reason for our mele inoa is to have their name and their legacy continue on for generations and generations. Within a mele inoa, you have a lot of different layers of cool stuff stuff called kauna, which is hidden meaning, or the double entendre, or even triple entendre. So you're going to say one thing and hear one thing, but it has other meanings and layers on top of that. So just a few lines in this melody, you know what, just to talk about. Um, uh, just one of the lines is kahoa he he o kaniuhi. Niuhi is a man-eating shark. Kahoa he he is a racing companion. So it says that Duke, raced against the man-eating sharks. Now, maybe he did, I don't know, he might have been a, a shark racer, but if you think about these lines and you ponder them, uh, that shark or those sharks could very well be those competitors that were hungry to de defeat you right after he won the, the title. Also, my own thought is that um, Duke could, be, could have been symbolic of the things that were happening to uh, Hawaii. So he could have represented Hawaii, and as I said, during the, that time, Hawaii was, uh, the kingdom was falling. So it could have been, he was Hawaii, and the sharks were the different things from the outside of the world attacking. Could be. All of these things are just that we, things that we speculate as readers today. Only the, the melee writer, the, the, the uh, chant writer, composer, actually knows the real meaning. But you put these things in there so that your, your listener and your reader can just ponder what these things might be. Another interesting line is um, So Maleka being America, that's an interesting one. Hua is a flower. Uh, hau is, has several meanings. Uh, one meaning is it's the wild hibiscus. So it could be, and the word lohi is uh, kind of like a, it's a glistening, a glimmering type of thing. So you're, you're likening Duke to these flowers, these glistening flowers of America, probably his teammates. So he's traveling with these wonderful people that became his friends, and this Mele writer is comparing them to these beautiful flowers. But then, if you dig a little bit more, you know what some of these words mean. Hau also has um, different meanings. It means snow, snow white. And that word lohi, in addition to being listening, also means slow. So the writer could also be saying, well, he has these wonderful traveling companions, but they're also really slow white flowers compared to you. So it's kind of a, a playful way to, to dig. Nothing, no ill intent, but it's kind of like, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of the different layer of the Hawaiian poetry that you'll find within the words. One more thing is, um, it said that he's, um, you are the 
grandchild of Ka'ahu Ka'ahu. Ka'ahu Ka'ahu is not only a shark, but she's a shark deity. In Pearl Harbor, there's a famous shark goddess that would swim in that area, but she was a protector of that area. She wouldn't eat the people, she wouldn't you know, attack them, she would make sure that they were all cared for. And this Mele says that he is a grandchild of this goddess. And you wouldn't make a statement like that unless you knew something about the individual and that, in fact, Duke was from a godly line, okay? Our chiefs are considered to be descendants of the gods, and we know that Duke actually descended from the, um, uh, the Alapa'inui line, I know, from Ohala. Uh, so he had that um, chiefly lineage, so you're kind of poetically poet saying these things without you know, being so literal about it. The writer of this particular mele, in the, uh, the newspaper, it just says, na honua pi'ilani, and that's it. Now, a lot of times, what would happen when people would post these things, especially on Mele Inoa, you, they wouldn't use their real name. And that could be for many reasons. One reason would be, if you were going to put a, a name chant to honor someone, you don't want your name in there and taking away some of that thunder. So you, you would use a different name, so you don't, you're not really identified, so it's all about who you is. And I think that's a beautiful thing. But from what that name is, Nahonua Pi'ilani, we can kind of, we have a clue, um, at least where that individual was from, or that group of individuals, because it might not have been just one person. Nahonua Pi'ilani translates to the base of Pi'ilani. Pi'ilani being the great chief of Maui, and um, he united all of the, uh, the island and brought them under a peaceful rule. And so when you, see, when you hear that term, Nahonua Pi'ilani, you know that it's associated with people from Maui. So, uh, I, I throw that in there because that's my little connection because I'm from Maui. My mom is um, born and raised in Hana, and it's kind of like my little, my little Maui connection to the, to the story here. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to do the Mele Inoa. I do apologize that we're going to use the Uli Uli to um, uh, help us tell the story. This kula was, uh, like I said, the words came from that, that newspaper article, but the hula and the, the, yeah, the voice was... Um, done primarily by Kahigo uh, Lelo Suyoka, uh, another colleague of mine, Loko uh, Mike Lipscomb, and myself. We, the three of us put this hula together and put the, the voice to them. So I'm going to do this hula to honor you, Paolo Pahano. <clears throat> Now is just open up the 
floor for any questions. Um, before, I, before I do that, let me just say, if you do want to come check out the show, I, t- I told you I'd give you the information again. You can go to the website, which is htyweb.org. We have two more shows next week, Saturday, at 2 o'clock and 4.30. But right now, I'd just like to open up the floor. If anyone has any questions or comments, 